Hello and welcome to our webinar, What's Cooking Fall 2020? I'm Annie Bostrom, Associate Editor for the Adult Books Department at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Links to today's slides and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download these materials at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Today we have the pleasure of hearing from Annie Mazes, Manager of Library Marketing and Sales at Workman Publishing, Stephen Sussman, Sales Director at Skyhorse Publishing, Elise Levine, Director of Sales and Marketing at Shadow Mountain Publishing, Tara Teaspoon Bench, Food Editor and Author of Live Deliciously, which publishes on October 6th, and Sarah Tansley, Branch Manager of the Roden Branch of Chicago Public Library. First, we'll hear from Annie Mazes. Annie handles adult library marketing for all imprints at Workman Publishing Company. She also heads up the ALMA, the Adult Library Marketing Association Committee. Some favorite titles include The Orphan Master's Son and Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. After nearly 10 years, she still can't believe she gets to book talk with librarians every day. Hashtag dream job. Welcome, Annie, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much, Annie. Um, this is some of our social media contact information, so if you'd like to be in touch, please do follow along with what's going on in our world. Next slide, please. I'm going to start with the big book of cider making. Best-selling authors and acclaimed fermentation teachers, Christopher and Kristen Shockey, turn their expertise to the world of fermented beverages in the most comprehensive guide to home cider making available. With expert advice and clear step-by-step -step instructions, the Big Book of Cider Making equips readers with the skills they need to make the cider they want. The Shockey's years of experience cultivating an orchard and their experiments in producing their own ciders have led them to master formula for cider making success, whether starting with apples fresh from the trees or working with store-bought juice. They explore in depth the different phases of fermentation and the entire spectrum of complex flavor and style possibilities. This thorough, thoughtful handbook is an empowering guide for every cider maker, from the beginner seeking foundational techniques and tips to the intermediate cider crafter who wants to expand their skills. This book goes on sale now. <laughs> Next up, we have The Field Guide to Cheese, which is my happy place. This is the ultimate guide to the world of cheese and the only fully illustrated cheese reference. It begins with a history lesson on the creation of cheese, offers a primer of the many types of milks and categories of cheeses, and then leads readers to an encyclopedic survey of over 400 global cheeses. All illustrated, it's really beautiful. There are cheeses that we all love, like feta, fontina, gouda, mozzarella, that's my Staten Island accent coming out, pecorino romano, and chevre, but also rarities like King River Gold, a washed brine cheese from Australia, Dancing Fern, a raw cow's milk cheese from Tennessee, and Danbo, a semi-soft aged cheese from Denmark. Fine cheeses that are best for melting, that are best served alone, the, the ones that are the stinkiest. A global collection of maps places each cheese to its origin and readers can take their knowledge even further by reading up on the microbial life of cheese and the science behind our tasting palettes. Plus, there are pairing menus. Packed with information, this book is for professional cheesemongers just as much as it is for those who just simply love cheese. This is available now. Next up, we have Give Me Liberty and Give Me a Drink, which is a lot of fun. Across this nation and breweries and liquor stores, bars, and even in our own homes, we are being stripped of basic boozy rights. 
thanks to prohibition and its 100 year hangover, some of the most outdated, bizarre and laughable laws are still on the books today and they center around alcohol and how we drink it. In New Mexico, dollar margaritas are illegal. In Utah, cocktails must be mixed behind a barrier called the Zion Curtain. And no happy hours in Massachusetts, the state banned it in 1984. Created by the nation's leading alcohol policy expert, Give Me Liberty and Give Me a Drink combines these hilarious laws with 65 recipes for classic and innovative cocktails. So arm yourself with a mezcal-based one pint, two pint, inspired by Vermont's ban on beer pitchers or the Boiling Point, a beer cocktail that's highly illegal in Virginia, and get ready to drink your way to revolution. This is available now. Instant Pot Cheese. I've got cheese on the brain today, apparently. The beloved Instant Pot can be used to do just about anything. Caramelize onions, boil eggs, steam rice, and now you can make cheese. Cheese making is a multi-cooker, is not only time and money saving, but the cooker's accurate and consistent temperatures make it an ideal tool for the craft. Claudia Lucero is the author of best-selling One Hour Cheese, and she presents the cheese making basics like, you know, cheese making basics, and then covers classics such as paneer, ricotta, goat, and easy cottage cheese before introducing more sophisticated options like burrata and feta. She even has dairy-free alternatives. This will be available September 29th. Baking at the 20th Century Cafe is beautiful. It transports readers straight to the grand cafes of Europe and brings renewed attention to the legendary sweet and savory baking recipes of Central and Eastern Europe. Michelle Polzine, one of San Francisco's best pastry chefs, pays homage to the foundational desserts of so many cultures while lightening, lightening and modernizing the recipes through her California lens. Her fruit desserts, nut-based desserts, and chocolate treats, many of them gluten-free, are smart, interesting, and foolproof and deliver big flavor. Polzine's coveted honey cake recipe is included too, that's the one on the cover, along with recipes for plum kuchen, walnut hamantaschen, linzer tort, poppy filled rugula, vanilla cheesecake, even pierogi and potato ganishes, all full of twists and innovations. All of the recipes are written with Polzine's quirky, relatable, you can do this enthusiasm to ensure readers that they can achieve excellent results. Following in the footsteps of such esteemed bakers as Nancy Silverton and Dory Greenspan, Baking at the 20th Century Cafe offers a new entry into the Essential Baking Cookbook Canon. This will be available October 13th. From the creator of Skinny Southern, Emmy Award-winning chef Marilyn Carter, comes another collection of delicious, nutritious versions of your favorite Southern foods. Satisfy your cravings with completely gluten-free, dairy-free, refined sugar-free baked goods that do not skimp on flavor. The recipes included lightened up Southern staples like lemon squares, ginger snaps, and herb biscuits, alongside incredible and surprising combinations of Southern flavors like pumpkin cranberry pecan bread, sweet potato meringues, and lemon blueberry cream pie. With sections about making your own nut butters and refined sugar-free jams and fruit butters, Skinny Southern Baking reimagines Southern baking with style and simplicity. Laralyn Carter is considered Georgia's go-to authority on Southern entertaining. She's converted to healthy, clean cooking and shares her vast experience and array of healthy Southern recipes in this groundbreaking cookbook. That will also be available October 13th. So this book is a little bit pricey and not for the novice chef, but I would be completely remiss if I didn't include it because it is incredible and it is from one of America's most acclaimed chefs, Thomas Keller. Bound by a common philosophy, linked by live video, and staffed by a cadre of inventive and skilled chefs, the kitchens of Thomas Keller's celebrated restaurants, the French Laundry in California, and Per Se in New York, are in a relationship unique in the world of fine dining. Ideas bounce back and forth in a dance of creativity, knowledge, innovation, and excellence. It's a relationship that the very embodiment of collaboration and of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts, and all of it is captured in this incredible cookbook with meticulously detailed recipes for 70 beloved dishes, including smoked sturgeon roulettes on an everything bagel, tomato consomme, celery root pastrami, steak and potatoes, peaches and cream. Just reading these recipes is a masterclass in the state of the art of cooking today. Learn to make the crunchiest coating with a cornstarch, egg white paste and potato flakes. To limit waste in the kitchen by fermenting vegetable trimmings for sauces with an unexpected depth of flavor. Throughout, there are 40 recipes for the basics to elevate home cooking. It is truly a work of art. And it is available October 27th. 
Pie Academy is so much fun. Who doesn't have time for pie? Whether it's blueberry, pineapple, pina colada, triple layer pumpkin chocolate, ricotta pie with chocolate and toasted almonds, or classic lemon meringue, Ken Hadrick, Dean of the Pie Academy, dishes up the how-to for bakers of all levels, from the first timer to the pie passionate. Step-by-step -step instructions and photos offer reassuring guidance and reveal the secret ingredients of truly great pie, such as the best tools to use, recipes for crust and pastry variations, including gluten-free, whole wheat, and extra flaky, how to bake with fresh versus frozen fruit, suggestions for decorating pies with cutouts and dough designs, and so much more. Library Journal Starred Review says the wide-ranging, well-curated mix of classic and contemporary recipes and expert advice make this an essential primer for avid home bakers. Available October 27th. This is such a cute cover. Mochi, the traditional Japanese treat made of chewy rice dough, is a popular and versatile vehicle for all kinds of sweet and savory fillings and easily molded into adorable shapes and characters that define Japan's culture of cuteness. Food writer Kaori Becker's easy to follow techniques for creating and cooking with mochi deliver the perfect mix of fun and tradition. Each colorful page brims with recipes for hand pounded, steamed and modern microwave mochi, fillings like rose water, Nutella, black sesame, Oreo cream cheese and Japanese plum wine. Mochi focused goodies like bacon wrap mochi, ozoni soup, baked goods and inspiration for shaping irresistibly charming mochi flowers, baby chicks, pandas and more. This is available November 24th. Not a cookbook, but a very helpful food reference. From two best-selling authors and activists in the vegan community, this is a very readable guide to the why of going vegan rather than the how. 72 fact-based essays for the vegan curious address the reasons to go vegan, including some that may surprise you, like reducing inflammation in your body. It also affects where your tax money goes, and it could even improve your sex life. You can ward off Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and other metabolic diseases. You can still eat delicious burgers, and you also help save the planet. So whether because of environment, health, or compassion for animals, more and more people are trying Meatless Mondays, choosing Impossible Burgers, or helping books like Thug Kitchen, Forks Over Knives, and Skinny Bitch become national bestsellers by becoming vegan. This is available December 15th. Cooking Through Cancer is an excellent resource for combating the symptoms caused by treatment and for enhancing the recovery process. Written by Richard Lombardi, the cancer fighting chef and a cancer survivor himself, and packed with nutrient-rich re recipes, some from Richard's own award-winning restaurant, and conveniently organized by tabs for delicious food during treatment and recovery. Each recipe is powered with cancer-fighting ingredients, which are called out on the sides of each page. And because cooking can be tough when you're recovering from treatment, this book is packed with helpful shortcuts, kitchen basics, a quick reference list, and a sample grocery list. Even better, Cooking Through Cancer includes 10 kid-friendly recipes that the whole family can enjoy, plus recipes from professional chefs and celebrities that have joined the fight against cancer, including Jay Leno and Mark DiCarlo. This is available February 2nd, and that is it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Annie. Next, we'll hear from Stephen Sussman. Stephen has been in book publishing for 47 years. He began his career as an assistant book buyer in a college bookstore in 1973. He left that job in 1976 to go to work as a publisher's rep on the road. Since then, he's had an extremely rich and varied career. He's worked for 12 different houses and is still standing, from small and mid-sized independent publishers to the largest corporate houses. He has experience in every facet of book sales and marketing and has sold every type of book to every type of buyer. At this point in his career as a sales director, it doesn't matter what you call him, what matters is that he still enjoys the work. Skyhorse has afforded him the opportunity to expand his horizons. In addition to his sales responsibilities, he now acquires rights to books from all over the world. That's fun. Take it away, Stephen. Thank you. I thought I'd put my face on here so you could all see how cute I am, um, even after 47 years in book publishing. Um, I like to say that I, we all share a common element that I am happy to marry my livelihood with my passion. So um, I love being around books and have been for my entire career. So without further ado, first slide, please. Okay. Oh, look, a bookless starred review. Um, this is for the Chilean kitchen, which is new uh, this fall. Um, 
It's going to be published in October. This is a, um, a wide ranging look at foods from Chile and how to make them, both seasonal recipes, stews, breads, as you can see from the cover. Um, you've got the full review there. And um, I wanted to say uh, thank you very much, Booklist. Okay, next slide. So I've taken a different tack to my presentation. Annie Mazes was great. Um, but I like to think that I, I should give you an introduction to Skyhorse. Um, we're a mid-sized independent publisher based here in New York. Um, I should say that we have uh, 9,000 titles in our backlist, probably between five and 10% are cookbooks. Um, our cookbooks range from healthy cookbooks, decadent cookbooks, wine, beer, um, cooking with wine, cooking with beer, and I'll just show you a few examples as we skim through the backlist. Um, I have 36 categories here, and I don't intend to spend uh, a lot of time on each one. You've got the PowerPoint, you've got a list of titles, um, and you can uh, see more in detail on your own. So we're publishing uh, just now uh, a bunch of healthy titles. Um, as you can see, uh, Keto, vegan, gut health. Next slide, please. Ah, I'll come back more to Fix It and Forget It a little later, but we've got three new titles uh, from Fix It and Forget It. It's not just um, um, slow cooker anymore, um, but as I said, I'll tell you more later. Um, we've also got bone broth, uh, Rotisserie chicken. This is the chicken you buy in a delicatessen or a uh, food stop, and you bring it home, and we tell you how to dress it up. Um, beach house dinners is self-explanatory. Next, please. Ah, so more titles. Um, canning and preserving is a facsimile edition. Um, cooking for two, self-explanatory, quick and easy dinner solutions. Um, as uh, cannabis becomes uh, more widespread in the country, we've uh, gone into uh, mixing cookbooks with cannabis. Um, so we've got high tea and 420 cannabis cookbook. For those of you that don't know, back in the days, uh, 420 was a police call for uh, marijuana. And um, it fits in on April 20th, which is when uh, cannabis is celebrated across the country. Next slide, please. Green kickstarts a salad to start your meal with, Simply Fish, Everyday Healthy Cooking from Prevention, uh, another title from Prevention, Cooking and Baking with Almond Flour, also self-explanatory. Next. Choosing kombucha, baking with beans, secretly healthy desserts, um, and uh, delicious probiotic drinks. Again, a range of health, uh, common hot stuff, um, we'll move on. More keto, uh, more vegan, and food is med medicine. Um, so again, um, I'll get back to fix it, forget it a little further on. Next slide, please. Well, I got a lot of new titles here. Reindeer food is a, is a real fun thing. Uh, we have other titles which uh, fall in the same category I'll show you later. I've got Christmas baking. Cozy Christmas movie cookbook is really based around Hallmark movies so that you can cook and enjoy your meal while watching a movie. Literary holiday cookbook marries meals and what you're reading. The recipes are all based on, on literature. Um, and then cake decorating. Next. Ah, more. Um, so the Princess Dessert Cookbook, again, falls into a great category, kind of goes along with the Harry Potter College Cookbook. So I've got the Natural Witches Cookbook, which is very health oriented, Amish baking, and um, Eat Like a Rock Star. These are recipes from some of the most famous rock, uh, rock uh, stars uh, in the world. Next. Phew. Um, Wild Mushrooms, Foodies Beer Cookbook, Cooking Wild Game, Venison, um, next. I wanna get into the categories. Um, okay, wine. So every food pairing 
deserves wine. And these are just a sampling of some of our wine books. We have a wine journal so that you can record your favorite wines. Wine Lover's Apprentice teaches you about wine. Wine Table is a beautifully illustrated coffee table book uh, about wines that you mix with lovely dishes. I've got a couple of books on champagne and the Rosé Lover's Companion. Next, from wine to beer. Um, so we talk about pairing beer with food. Um, so you've got all kinds of beer. We also have a beer journal. Um, and you can see that we have uh, at least five titles to pair beer with food. Next, regular beverages. So these are not alcoholic. So we have infused waters, uh, healthy juicing, green drinks, and mocktails. Um, I prefer the mocktails because I'm not a big drinker, but I like to hoist the drink and make believe. Next, more beverages. Uh, variations on Bloody Mary. What a swell party it was. Talks about drinks back in the nightclub days. Key cocktails, obvious, and remixology is, is new ways to make mixed drinks. Let me know if I'm talking too fast. I'm a New Yorker. Uh, more beverages. Uh, whoop, mocktails again. Sorry. Uh, literary libations is what to drink while you read. Mixed up is new style cocktails. Ch hot chocolate, um, cider, mead, herbal wine, and cider. Next. Oh God, more drinks. Um, let's breeze through these. These are quick cocktail drinks, infused spirits, more cocktails, all about worldwide spirits, gin, scotch, rye. Let's go. Next, please. All American cooking. So as you see, we, we publish a lot of books into various categories. I don't think I have a celebrity chef in the list, but we do have hearty, strong cookbooks. So I've got the American Table, New Frontier Cooking, uh, Amish Cooking again. One of our best sellers is African American Cookbook, and I have California Cooking and Southern Stock. Next, more all American cooking. So I've got Southern Heirloom Cooking, New York City Kitchen Cookbook, uh, Cajun Kitchen. Home front cooking of recipes that wives develop uh, or husbands develop while their spouse is in the service, style and spice. Tasha Tuta family cookbook. When I was a youngster in this business, I sold Tasha Tuta's children's books and this kind of echoes that style. Let's go next. International cooking. So these are uh, Greek cookbooks or French cookbooks, my Paris market cookbook um, and uh, Next, more international cooking coming. Swedish, modern Jewish table, Norwegian, Polish, Scandinavian, we've got it all covered. Next, more. This is my uh, Latin, Latin slide, Latin table, Cuban flavor, Peruvian cookbook, and Latin superfoods. Next, oh boy. Um, Chinese food, bento blast, yummy kawaii bento, or Japanese food boxes, basically for children. Tipa Secrets is uh, Indian food with a, a, a diabetic twist. Next. Food for lovers, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Recipes with history, these are both recipes from um, early American and medieval times. Next. Cooking with, so I told you, cooking with booze, cooking with cannabis, cooking with rum, chili, spice, uh, and coffee. Next. More. Um, recipes with herbs, licorice, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, tipsy treats. For those of you that like to drink and eat at the same time, you can do it all in one bite. Next. Baking. We have a variety of baking books from baking bread, biscuits, uh, Dutch oven bread, sourdough bread. Next. To desserts. So best pies, harvest pies, mini pies. My favorite is the William Greenberg uh, desserts cookbook. William Greenberg is a very famous bakery in New York City on the Upper West Side. Their treats are great. And particularly if you see in the middle, their black and whites are out of this world. Next, more desserts, oh boy. Um, 
So love of popsicles, a uh, variety of popsicles you can make at home. Marshmallow Heaven are all recipes that have marshmallows in them. Um, farm to table desserts are fresh fruit. And uh, let's see, what's down there are rose petal cooking and then peanut butter comfort. Next, more desserts. Creative to cookie decorating is uh, one of our best selling cookbooks um, or baking books. The uh, author appears on Hallmark Channel and uh, other TV shows constantly. Then I've got Norwegian cakes and cookies, amazing cakes, bakes, and Austrian desserts, Linzer tart and such. On, on would we go. Healthy eating. So smoothie bowls combines nice bowls with smoothies, avocado cookbook, sorry, avocado cookbook, and then I've got two book, two cookbooks for aging gracefully and one to make you stop worrying. Next. More health. Um, so hormonal balance, non-GMO, healthy juicing, healthy matcha, and low oxalate anti-inflammatory cookbook. That's a mouthful. Next. Uh -huh. So real food, really fast, health food, spice for life, spiralize, intermittent fasting, sugar detox, and healthy indulgent, all design, recipes designed to make you healthy, obviously. Next. More. Um, so this is uh, basically kale, vegetables, um, GM, non-GMO, quinoa, um, Again, I don't need to go into detail. Next slide, please. Uh, more chickpeas, clean cooking, cooking with Leo. These are all uh, Leo's uh, healthy recipes, more juicing and chia seed cookbook. I think you get an idea of the variety of our list. Um, healing tonics, juices and smoothies, healthy drinks, and the Green Isle is probably our best known. Um, they make great uh, smoothies, slushies, and uh, and uh, green drinks. Next, these are uh, cookbooks that uh, have a nutritional balance and um, help to uh, to. One minute left. Oh my God! Next slide. Paleo. Next slide. <laughs> I've got a minute. Um, Gluten-free, obviously. Next slide. I just want to get to, um, keep going. I want to get to good books. Uh, keep going. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> More. Uh, cooking for kids. This is a lot of fun. I have recipes that come from Harry Potter, from uh, um, all kinds of fantasy, and these sell really well. Um, next. Ah, fix it, forget it. So about five years, we bought Good Books. Good Books is well known for publishing uh, books that use slow cookers. So I've got a variety. We use uh, recipes for slow cookers in every which way. You can see down on the left, the original, one of the original titles from Phyllis Good. Um, I do want to close with telling you that while you think slow cookers are all um, old um, and they were crock pots, Hamilton Beach sells 7 million slow cookers a year. I just see that I got my warning from Grace. So uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get through everything, but you've got the PowerPoint, you've got the title list, and you can go and look at them at your own speed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. And like you said, everyone has, um, you'll all have all the, the titles and ISBNs for all those books in your title list. So we will now hear from Elise Levine and Tara Teaspoon Bench. Elise is Director of Sales and Marketing for Shadow Mountain Publishing and is a veteran book publishing professional who has worked on a wide range of books from Nickelodeon to Nancy Drew Mysteries to the Arden Shakespeare. She left New York City to move west to join Shadow Mountain. And Tara has spent more than 20 years in the food publishing industry, creating recipes and articles and food styling for various magazines, books, television, and advertising. Most recently, she has been the food and entertaining director for Ladies Home Journal magazine. Prior to working at the journal, Tara was a food editor at Martha Stewart Living, Kids, and Wedding Magazines. Weddings mag magazine. She has appeared on the Martha Stewart television show, The Today Show, and on the Food Network as a show judge and contestant. 
You can learn more about Tara at her website, tarateaspoon.com. Uh, thank you so much, both Tara and Elise. Thanks. Um, I'm Tara Bench, and I'm often called Tara Teaspoon. So I'm here to present my debut fall cookbook, Live Life Deliciously, and I'm so excited. I'm going to tell you why I wrote it and what I've learned in 20 years of being in media cooking, both in magazines and on TV. And I'll talk about my cooking point of view and what audience I'm writing for. So cookbooks to me are everyday useful, but they also reflect a culture and an era. Even though I live in a small New York City apartment, I have a major cookbook collection. I love them from vintage cookbooks from the early 1900s to the fondue craze cookbooks of the 70s to classic standards, which amazingly stand the test of time, like The Joy of Cooking and Mastering the Art of French Cooking and Rick Bayless's Mexico, One Plate at a Time, and many, many more. And like many of you, I sometimes slip through these cookbooks with no intention of cooking at the moment just to remind me of another era or transport me to another culture or allow me to be a culinary traveler to far off locales. Um, to have my own cookbook enter the marketplace and your homes and your libraries is truly a dream and an honor. So let me tell you why I wrote it. Um, I consider myself a culinary educator first. I wanna get the right tools into the hands of cooks and I want cooking to be a way to build traditions and make memories. And I want to show you how that's possible and enjoyable at the same time. And I have four pillars of culinary perspective, sound, sight, taste, and memory. And they all play into how I wrote the book. Memory to me is an important part of a culinary experience. You know, when, um, when I wrote my cookbook, I peppered it with those first taste and food sensory memories. Um, when I think of my mom cooking, my memory goes right to a skillet of sauteing onions. And that smell and sound says dinner to me. It says family, home, and comfort. And I spent my childhood cooking with mom and grandma. Family get-togethers revolved around beautifully prepared meals, even if it was just breakfast. And whole wheat pancakes, the recipe in my book, as you see on the bottom right, is my enhanced version of grandma's, minus the, the much beloved um, sound of my grandmother's blender cracking that wheat. As a young adult, let's see, I think, are we on to the next slide? As a young adult, I moved to New York City and it vastly expanded my culinary point of view just by having so many cultural food choices and flavor profiles, which were all new to me. I remember eating my first pork buns at a tiny Asian restaurant in Queens, New York. It was a delicious and eye-opening experience, having grown up in the West with very little authentic Asian food. With the recipes in my book, I want my readers to have those aha moments of, I didn't know I liked tater tot nachos, or chimichurri sauce, but really who doesn't like tater tot anything? <laughs> so what brought me from my suburban home in the Rocky Mountains to New York City in the first place? Probably the dream of every aspiring chef and newly minted graduate of culinary school of my generation was to work with Martha Stewart. And my dream came true in the late 90s when I became a food editor at Martha Stewart Living occasionally cooking with her on her TV show, as you see in the photos. Martha Stewart, with her magazines, cookbooks, and TV show, changed culinary history in that before Martha, you were either cooking gourmet food at home like Julia Child, or you were a home cook sticking to Americanized lasagna and quick and easy cookies from Good Housekeeping magazine. And Martha showed that home cooks could up their game by learning the basics and presenting food beautifully and elegantly and most important, deliciously. She was a huge influence on my culinary point of view. Her influence taught me how to teach basic skills through new takes on classic recipes and luscious food styling to aspire to on a regular weeknight. 
as well as how to inspire confidence in readers to build their skill set. And many people don't know that Martha started her career as a stockbroker, but early on realized cooking was her passion. And she started a catering business in 1972, which gained a following um, and it showcased her cooking talent and her originality. That small business grew into a larger business that continues to be an inspiration to me to follow my passion and like Martha to be authentic and enthusiastic about a topic, which to me is endlessly fascinating. And I wanted my first cookbook to be an inspiration and a learning experience and still be everyday cooking friendly. That was really important to me. The book is arranged in sections, which you can dip into randomly, um, starting with the new pantry staples and the right equipment. Uh, this chapter includes an homage to knives. I am always shocked at how many people struggle to cook because of a dull or tiny knife. Um, and knives are the number one tool in my house. And then a chapter on bites, dips, and snacks, which is one of my favorite sections because it's about grazing goodness and food for appetizers, tapas parties, or simply hanging out. Um, weeknight routines is another one, which includes base recipes that can be used in several different dinners. And for me, this makes shaking up the midweek dinner routine completely uncomplicated. And then sweets to share. I am a huge fan of baking and making treats for friends. And I know that my readers are big baking fans too. Most of my blog readers are 25 to 45. And those are the years of learning and exploring and finding out what you like. And they're also the years of the most frequent entertaining and get togethers and bringing people into your home. So this is also a book for the very experienced cook who is maybe tired of making the same old dishes and wants to expand their horizons with precisely the same 20 to 25 minute prep times for meals. And you know, why not upgrade your cooking game to caramelized onion and smoked Gouda mac and cheese or bacon wrapped sweet potatoes? or a tomato and Roquefort steak flatbread. And these are all easy, accessible recipes. I've calculated that I have developed and created about 10,000 recipes over the course of my career. And so adding new spices and sauces was completely essential to keeping things interesting and fresh. And of course, necessity is the mother of invention. And when I was a food director at Ladies Home Journal, the readers wanted to reuse that spice that I recommended several issues back or pull that bottle of chili sauce out again so it didn't sit in the fridge. So the recipes were always grounded in some practicality and I keep that with me as I create new recipes and when I wrote my book. In my chapter, The New Pantry Staples, I list the key ingredients to kickstart a multitude of different flavor profiles. So nothing is hard to find. It's all about the flavor combinations you can create from having on hand things like capers, molasses, limes, fish sauce, hot sauce, cayenne, and even brown sugar. So the recipe called Ridiculously Delicious Grapefruit Guacamole adds a pop of hot sauce and chopped grapefruit to contrast that bite of hot for a delicious combination. And I have recipes like that throughout, combining tangy balsamic and salty prosciutto with a little brown sugar and mandarin. Um, but the flavor profile triggers that sensory memory, which tells my brain, I want that now. So as I said, the pillars of my culinary perspective are sound and sight and taste and memory. And recipes can sound phenomenal. Even a description can create joy. So burrata with grilled peaches and orange zest chimichurri is something that will draw the attention of your guests when you announce it. As opposed to pigs in a blanket, which we all know are delicious, but you can hear the sound difference of that description. Cooking and eating use all the senses. And as a food stylist, um, I 
you can see from the photos on the slide that presentation is really important to me. I love food that looks amazing, both in real life and entertaining, but also on social media, which as you know, has become a virtual dining room, especially now during the pandemic. So I encourage eating foods that taste good and so you remember that experience of eating it. And I say try new foods and flavors and find more to love. And that's what's in my book is for instance, you pretty much cannot leave my home without trying rosemary olive butter. And I am convinced that it's impossible not to crave it once you start down that path. I wrote this book for all those reasons and as a way for people to use their creativity to explore cooking and share it just like I love to. So I thank you so much for spending time with me and listening to me tell about my book and my history and I hope you will type in any questions into the chat and I'd be happy to answer at the end of this webinar. So continuing on with Shadow Mountain Cookbooks, let me turn the time over to my co-presenter, Elise. Okay, thank you. I'd like to tell you about Six Sisters Stuff Cookbooks, their 10th cookbook coming out in January, just in time for that post-holiday period where everybody wants quick and easy. And this is Instant Pot Cooking. And I realize that there are a lot of Instant Pot cookbooks in the marketplace, but as a buyer said to me recently, that's true, but I wanna hear what the Six Sisters have to say about it. And they are a brand, they're a trusted brand, and they've been around for a while, about 10 years. They are a real presence in social media. Their blog gets about 4 million views per month. And more recently, they've become really popular on YouTube. Their video, Instant Pot Recipes for Beginners, has half a million views on it. And really, all of their Instant Pot demos are amongst the top ranked for them. So this book comes directly from the interests from their readers and their followers. In case you missed it, from spring 20, they did Healthy Eats with Six Sisters stuff. Healthy for the Six Sisters is not kale. This is more about making quick and easy flavor and ingredient substitutions. So natural food substitutions to avoid sugar and processed foods. Recipes include uh, egg roll in a bowl and cauliflower crust pizza. And then Copycat Cooking is a recent book, and I think this is a phenomenal recipe book. It, they replicate all of the favorite recipes, the signature dishes from popular restaurants. And this would be a great cookbook during the pandemic when people are not going out. So some examples would be Ikea Swedish meatballs, um, Disneyland mint juleps, and Chili's molten lava chocolate cake. These two titles are their best sellers. Dinner Made Easy was praised by Booklist as having recipes that are truly time savers and have quite clever tips and techniques. Um, so sections here include 30 minutes or less, slow cooker, freezer meals, and so forth. And their all-time bestseller happens to be their first book, which is The 12 Days of Christmas. And it has recipes, sanity saving tips, and so forth. Let me go quickly to the next slide. Raised in the Kitchen by Carrie Ann Cheney. This is a book to get kids involved in the kitchen very early. And this author remembers as she was a kid learning from her mom and her grandmother. And so the book has all sorts of sections covering food prep, cleanup, meal lists, recipes, and features such as activities to keep things fun in the kitchen. 75 recipes it starts out with easy things like baked potatoes, and then it gradually progresses as kids pick up basic cooking skills, next slide, to things like Carmelitas and chicken parm and frozen yogurt. It also includes lessons on kitchen etiquette, hygiene and food safety, and how to set the table. Next slide. Quick mention of our cozy culinary mystery series by Josie Kilpack, 14 books in all. They are all standalones in there. And final slide, you will get an email from me later this week with information where you can download and request ebook review copies on Edelweiss or NetGalley. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elise and Tara. Our final presenter today will be Sarah Tansley. Sarah is the branch manager of the Roden branch of the Chicago Public Library, a bookless cookbook reviewer, and an all around cookbook enthusiast. Thanks so much for joining us today, Sarah. Hi. Um, so thanks for the introduction, Annie. Um, 
I am a 20-year public library veteran with a real passion for cookbooks. Like Annie said, I review for book list. Um, I host a cookbook club here at my library, and I'm currently serving my third year on the RUSA Codes Cookbook List Selection Committee. And so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about this list and how you can use it, and also a few tips about cookbooks, cookbook readers advisory. So the Codes Cookbook List is a yearly list of outstanding culinary titles um, chosen by a committee of librarians um, and like-minded folks. Um, I'm going to go over our criteria so you have an idea of what we're working with. Um, we, all the recipes are um, well conceived and explained in our books. Um, they offer uniqueness of subject, approach, or voice. It is thoughtfully or excellently produced, and this includes book design, layout, and the photography and illustration. Another criteria is that they're a pleasure to read and they have some literary merit. Um, we also want these books to make a significant contribution in the field. Um, and we want them to embody a standard of its type or to be to a new or unexpected take on those standards. And then these works are of lasting importance. Um, so you can use these lists to purchase with confidence. If you know nothing about cookbooks, you can take a look at these 12 titles um, from 2019 and 2018 and really have a good handle um, on Reader's Advisory and what um, you can provide for your library for collection development. Um, let's see. Um, so a little bit about Cookbook Reader's Advisory. Um, I'm going to share three titles with you in a second um, that are from last year's list, and they're really RA no-brainers. Um, but first, I want to talk a little bit about um, your patrons and um, how you find out what they're looking for. So first, the first question is, is your, um, is your patron a home cook or is your patron a cookbook reader? Um, remember, with the rise of cooking TV, more and more of us are aspirational cooks. Um, we're reading the cookbooks, we're not cooking from the cookbooks, and so we're looking for voice and place much like we do with like traditional um, RA fiction categories. So how do you know who is who? Well, your home cook is gonna start the conversation bragging a little bit about what they made from the cookbook that they're returning or what they're talking about with you. They've made recipes from the book, okay? Your cookbook reader are gonna talk about everything else in the book. Your cookbook reader is gonna talk about the stories, the voice, the place, the photos, the layout, because they're really paying closer attention to that. So let's look at some examples. Next slide. So this first book, um, I have to say, well, these all are my favorites from last year. Um, they all, all of the titles have a lot in common. They're really fantastic to cook from, and they're really fantastic to read. So that's why they're RA no-brainers. So this is Midwest Made Big Bold Baking from the Heartland by Shauna Seaver. This is a beautiful nostalgic book that chronicles the history of Midwest baking. It's well researched on regional histories or favorite baked goods. Reading this book is like taking a trip back to your grandmother's kitchen. It's all kinds of regional favorites. It's so nostalgic and charming. And, and besides that, it's a great cookbook. So everything you make turns out awesome. It's just really, really fun. Um, so this one I would recommend um, for bakers and aspirational bakers. Next slide. So this one, Feast of the Seven Fishes of Brooklyn Italian's Recipes for Celebrating Food and Family by Daniel Paterna 
is also very nostalgic. This shares Daniel's roots, um, and it's also a love letter to his Brooklyn neighborhood. So this one's really unique because it really gives you a sense of place. Um, you go from shop to shop, meeting um, Bensonhurst, butchers, bakers, pasta makers. They're all interwoven with amazing recipes. You have to try the eggplant parmesan. It is killer. Um, but besides that, it's just really, really personal and touching. Also nostalgic. But what, with a unique sense of place, this makes you feel like you just went on this trip. Or maybe that's the first thing you're going to do when we can finally travel again. Next slide. My final selection here for kind of RA, you can't go wrong, is Jubilee Recipes from Two Centuries of African American Cooking by Tony Tipton Martin. This is really steeped in history. Um, Tipton Martin um, celebrates and researches the African American foodways um, of our history. They're beautiful, 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 beautiful photos. The stories are rich, the food is even richer, um, but well, like one of the great features of this book is the recipes um, are paired with recipes she's found from research that goes all the way back to the 1700s, um, original cookbooks, where original recipes came from. So this is really great for people who love the history of food. Also a great cover to cover read. Um, I think what's interesting about all three of these books is that they're great cover to cover reads if you can stop yourself from going to the kitchen to start cooking recipes because they're also so beautiful. You get hungry, it's delicious. Um, I'm gonna wrap up with a few um, final thoughts. One is if you have the passion for cookbooks, um, please consider joining Rusa's Codes Cookbook Committee for next year. We're always looking for eligible people who um, have the time and energy to really look at a lot of cookbooks during the course of the year. Don't be intimidated by cookbooks and Cookbook RA. Even if you're not a cook at all, you probably watch the Food Network. You're qualified. That's all we, it really takes is just to be able to appreciate the book. And then remember when you're doing Cookbook RA, um, it doesn't need to be a perfect match for your patron because cookbook enthusiasts are also park critic. So <laughs> cookbook enthusiasts um, enjoy a miss as much as they enjoy a hit and they're happy to talk about um, cookbooks that aren't perfect for them or what they like or don't like about a cookbook just as much as ones that they love. Um, so be open, just kind of know your collection and be willing to share those books with people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us today. A huge thank you to all of our wonderful panelists today. Tomorrow, everyone will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past programs and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. And did you know that Booklist content is freely available to all for one more week? And I am especially excited about this because our Food Spotlight issue, our October 1st issue, will mail on Thursday, I believe, and be live on our site. So please check it out for um, all subscribers and for everyone for the next week. You can start reading with our digital edition, a format that pairs the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print, online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get Booklist for only $75. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. One more thank you to our panelists and our sponsors, Workman Publishing, Skyhorse Publishing, and Shadow Mountain Publishing. This concludes today's webinar. <laughs>